I used to hunt. My father bought me a gun that I could shoot the, uh, the wildlife in the local area to bits with when I was six. For a time I did this. I was quite successful. I was not a bad marksman. And then, because my father was a physician, we used to take the wounded animals back and try and nurse them back into good health. Because this was obviously what you did if you had a sick animal. Um, and after a little bit, it dawned on me that this was a rather stupid activity. Why do you shoot them first and then try and bring them back to life? And so I got abandoned chicken. These are small sort of birds that uh, um, lay eggs and uh, a miniature chicken, if you like, and these bantams. And I was, uh, actually my aunt was, uh, had, had a, a house with a fairly large estate and she said she would look after this bantam chicken for me. I had a male, a rooster, and I had a female. And this was good, I was about nine at the time, I thought it was tremendous. The next vacation that I came back to my aunt, um, I had not only the hen and the rooster, but I had a lot of little chickens. And it was something that I, for the next two or three years I became immensely pleased with. And I no longer hunted. Um, I'd now become, as it were, a, a sort of poultry farmer. Christmas came um, on about the third or fourth year. And um, in the bottom of the uh, Christmas hamper that my aunt had sent us were two small birds. And I suddenly wondered, were these two small birds? They, she'd given us a turkey. Um, that was good size. And there were lots of sausages and other things. And there were eggs. But what about these two small birds? And suddenly a thought came to, a horrible thought. Were these two small birds? They couldn't be. Were they my bantams, my pet bantams? But after a, a fretful phone call, um, we found they were. And at that point, I decided that Christmas dinner was not, uh, not for me, in the traditional sense. Eating less eggs, less cheese, as one went, went on. I decided that um, after discussions with friends who said, you're not very logical, because I stopped wearing leather, I stopped um, wearing wool. Um, and they said, well, you, 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 you occasionally have an egg, you occasionally have some cheese or dairy. That's not logical either. Um, so I said, well, you're right. I resented it for a while, as one does. But they were correct. And so I became a vegan. One should be looking at the health effects of these foods, because one had been looking at these foods from a health effect all the way through one's career. So why did one not put them together as, as, as dietary patterns and look at the health effects of dietary patterns, show the benefits that you can have for health through eating these foods because all these things fitted together with diabetes and cardiovascular disease, dietary treatment. So I, I worked on these things. One had always seen foods as being modest in their acute effects. You can't see the effects in the short term and I think that's where people shouldn't be looking simply at the short term. In the long term studies has shown the effects of chronic consumption of, 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 of red meat, for example, relating to prostate, breast, and colon cancer, and also relate to cardiovascular disease. So the red meat has been shown to relate to cardiovascular disease, diabetes. Even white meats are shown to relate to lymphoma, prostate cancer, and other cancers. So I, I think that these diets very often are we're told they're satiating. I think they may be satiating, and for some people they may also verging on the nauseating.